One of the basic teachings of Eastern mysticism is acceptance, particularly in the Buddhist religion. In the West, however, we find this practice hard to come to terms with. Perhaps this is because our consciousness is permeated with the eye for an eye dogma that makes us prefer to look for some kind of revenge rather than accepting harsh treatment from others as part of our karma or and a lesson to be learned. Not just that, we tend to complain about how life treats us. We are taught in schools and as adults to stand up for ourselves and not to let others walk over us. How does this fit in with the teaching of Jesus to turn the other cheek, or to love one another, or to forgive not seven, but seventy times seven times? Also, the Buddha tells us that hatred never overcomes hatred, only love overcomes hatred. In our lives we face up to so many hard times and obstacles appear at almost every turn. Yet there are those who carpet every little difficulty that comes their way leaving no energy for the more important events of life that will confront them. Acceptance helps us to loosen the hold of the personal self which dislikes to be criticised or to take second place to anyone or anything. But we must learn to give way to others in things that really do not matter. Stress caused by friction with others to gain material goods or positions of power is in the end fruitless as in the eyes of the universe, we are just mayflies, creatures of but an hour. So what does all this mean? Shakespeare writes in Macbeth, Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Most of, the, of the, those things in life that we regard as important, in modern life in particular, are riddled with sound and fury. It is all a matter of how we they do indeed signify nothing, how we perceive events that come along in our lives, and how we make use of those experiences. Certainly accepting whatever happens to us will bring about calmness in our hearts, as we will not be constantly kicking against the pricks, and we will have the strength to face the greater trials of life. However, acceptance does not mean ignoring the seeming injustices around us, if they pertain to others. It would be insensitive to accept suffering inflicted upon people or animals. In these cases, though, we should not resort to anger or violence, which muddies the atmosphere of the planet we live upon. But with calmness and clarity, we should state our case and adhere to our principles with equanimity. Ahimsa, as propounded by Mahatma Gandhi, is a potent force. Gandhi also taught and practiced Satyagraha, which exhorts us to hold fast to the tranquil power of the soul to overcome and negate the machinations of evil and cruelty in the world. It may be said that his actions led to some acts of violence, but only by those who were unable to grasp the full potential of these ideals. W. Q. Judge writes in an article, Am I my, am I my brother's keeper? Resist not evil, saith one of the wise. You said this knew full well his duty and desired to convey to us knowledge. That he did not mean men to sit idly by while ignorance let slip the dogs of pain, anguish and suffering, wanton murder, is surely true. That he did not mean to ne men to kneel in puerile simulation of holiness by the roadside while their fellow men suffer torture, wrong and or abuse is still more true. If men revile, persecute or wrong one, why resist? Perhaps it is evil, but so long as it, as it affects oneself only, it is of no great matter. If want, sorrow or pain come to, to one, why resist or cry out? In the resistance or war against them, we create greater evils. Coming to oneself, they should have little weight, while at the same time they carry invaluable lessons in their hands. Rightly studied, they cause one to forget himself 
in the desire to assist others when similarly placed, and the lotus of duty or love for man to bloom out of the Nile mire of life. Resist not evil, but is inseparable from life. It is our duty to live and accept uncomplainingly all of life. Resist not evil, but rather learn of it all the good, which in reality it only veils. End of quote. We can find love to ourselves and our, our families or our country, and how much harm that does to our quest to find some kind of acceptance to things that come our way. This kind of acceptance does not make life easier and easier, nor does it make problems disappear. But it does change our attitude towards them. Remember that all we carry with us into this next life are those spiritual qualities we develop within us in this one. Book learning and intellectual knowledge pertain to the lower mind, which is connected to the transient personality and will disappear with all other aspects of our personal self. So it will not be carried through into the next incarnation. Such knowledge is only important in as much as it helps us in the process of self-transformation, the alchemy of the heart. If we can begin to see that as long as we have the right attitude, all that comes our way is helpful, helpful to us in our quest, then we may realise that all the trials of life are challenges, and a chance to find in them something that will be of positive, positive value to us. Oftentimes events will occur that temporarily overpower our emotions and our thoughts, and for a time we may be lost in the thick fog of our limitations and will feel despair. So if we can see in the darkness that all such ordeals pass in time, then we can learn lessons from those times that make us stronger and give us insight into the problems of others, then we are awakening to the fact that all things that come our way, seemingly good or bad, are actually helping us on our journey. It is sometimes very hard to grasp when we are in the midst of some terrible phase of our life. But if we have the seeds of understanding planted within our hearts, then surely they will sprout when better conditions arise and blossom into the flowers of compassion and spiritual awareness in time. And in the midst of suffering, they will provide those glimmers of light that will guide us through and comfort us when all seems lost, providing those things needed to keep our heads above water. So from now on, let us try to see things in perspective and cease to worry about all those little niggling things that matter not at all or very little. This will give us the courage and strength to face the larger problems that come our way in life. Can we accept acceptance? Hopefully we can. We can at least try. <laughs>